Okay, in this video, we're going to be installing Tailwind CSS to our next project. Now, Tailwind CSS is a so-called utility-first CSS framework. You may have heard about it, you may have used it. I've certainly used it in some previous courses here on Gemstack Training. Uh, I really like it. You know, if you don't like it, then please go ahead and use, you know, just maybe vanilla CSS or any other CSS framework that you have used in the past. Um, but as I said, we're going to be installing it here for um, our project. And what I'll do is type in npm install and just install the required dependencies, which is Tailwind CSS, Post CSS, and Auto Prefixer. Okay, so these are the three dependencies that we're going to set up. Once the setup is complete, we will just execute mpx tailwind css init-p, which will create a configuration file for us along with a post-css config. And tailwind css, uh, I'm sorry, tailwind.config.js is something that we will need to configure. And I'm going to take my configuration from my other file over, which is going to replace this content property with pages and components. And then we don't actually, because I'm not going to write uh, JavaScript, uh, so JSX and .ts or .tsx extension, but I'm going to leave it anyway. Uh, this is a very generic way of covering all bases, but essentially what we're saying here is the when we create a production build of our application, the the service that we're going to be using should go through the pages and the components folder, every subfolder of it, and look up all the JavaScript, TypeScript, JSX, and TSX files, and make sure that it collects the CSS classes from it and generates the final CSS bundle based on only the CSS classes that we're using here in this project. Okay, so that will, of course, be a lot smaller uh, compared to if we were to just, you know, drop in the entire Tailwind CSS uh, framework. And in globals.css in fact i'm going to remove this whole module uh from here so in globals.css we're just going to say at tailwind css i'm sorry at tailwind um, base at tailwind components and at tailwind utilities like so okay so that's done and now let's just go to index um, i'm going to remove this module we're not using any of these dependencies. I'm just going to create an empty fragment. And in this fragment, I'm going to add, say, an H1 with a class name of font bold text, I don't know, 5XL. And uh, no, that should be that should be enough. So let's hit save. Let's just run npm run dev again. So we'll see if now, if we see these changes added to the H1, I should probably add some text as well. Hello world. So if we see this hello world text bold and, you know, very large, then theoretically, Tailwind CSS is installed. And in fact, that is the case. Awesome. So Tailwind CSS is now installed and configured. And now we're going to essentially look at how to create the structure for our application. Now, the one thing that I want to do is to create another file in the pages folder. And I'm going to call that underscore document.js. So what underscore document.js is, it's basically a special file that we have in Next.js, which allows us to customize how the HTML and body tags are used or are being used by Next.js when it comes to rendering the page. So I can actually show you that by default, I'm just going to copy some stuff over. So by default, this is how the document.js file would look like, okay? So it imports HTML head main and next script from next document. It basically returns the structure so that we have the HTML we have the head, so this is going to be all the titles and all the you know the hrefs, the CSS stuff. Then we have the body, which has the main component, and then the next script, which will inject all these specific JavaScript onto the page. Now we're going to change this slightly, and I'm going to add a class 
to the body because I want to have a different sort of look and feel for my next app. And I'm just going to add Tailwind CSS specific classes here and I'm going to hit save. And now if I go back to my application, now I have this gradient background. So now this gradient is basically going to be applied to every single page that I have in my project. Now, the other thing that I'm going to do um, is under the pages folder, create another, actually, no, we're going to create a folder at the root level here called components. And inside the components, we are going to create multiple files but two files to get started with and one is going to be called layout.js and then the other one is going to be called nav.js now layout.js is going to be responsible for specifying the layout of our application okay and i'm going to import a bunch of things so we're going to import head from next and head so that's the head components which will allow us to you know, change the title of the page. Um, it's also uh, can be used for SEO purposes. So you may see some demos, um, people using this. Um, we're not going to get into that. Um, I'm also going to import, uh, well, at the later point, I'm going to import the navigation. But now let's just create the layout. And I'm going to, for now, extract this thing called the children from the props. And then I'm going to say head with a capital H because that's our component and in here I'm just going to specify the title but as I said um, you could specify you know all sorts of SEO uh, stuff in here maybe also um, uh, open graph data you know so images for sh for social share and so on and so forth and I'm going to call this the film database and after the head let's just put everything in an empty fragment like so and after the head I'm going to have, well, I'm just going to copy this over because I don't want to type all of this in, but I'm going to have a main element with a div with a bunch of uh, Delvin CSS specific classes. And then the most important thing is that we are wrapping the children keyword here that I've extracted from the props um, in between curly braces. So basically I can use this layout and then I can uh, specify some content to always apply to all my components and all my pages and then the children is going to represent the actual content of the page that is going to be inserted here so it's going to have the CSS around it at all times and so the next step is of course to say export default layout and once that's done that's great and let's also take a look at nav and we're going to work on, oh, I'm sorry, actually, this is, I just noticed that this should go to layout.js. And then in nav, we're going to build just our navigation, our nav bar. Okay, and what I'll do here, um, let's just see. So I'm going to return something, and I'm going to return a nav, and I am going to return... A div in here. I'm just going to copy some stuff over basically from uh, my pre-made example. Um, I'm going to pass in the strappy logo which I need to of course grab. Then I'm going to have some SVGs here and let me just add two links in here as well. So I'm going to take after the div I'm just going to enter some unordered list items with a list item and I'm just going to close the unordered list like so and I think I need to also close a div like so okay so this is going to be our navigation now as I said I need to somehow copy you know strappy logo so you can get the strappy logo from their website um, and what I'll do is I just need to add it to the public folder. So I'm just going to copy that over. And now I have that available locally on my machine. Okay, so I think we're nearly done here um, because I forgot to close that 
and now we need to say export default nav so i'm basically building up this navigation and also notice i'm using a link and that's a learning point here um, in next.js if you want to navigate between your various pages it is highly recommended that you use the link component that is part of the next package so i'm going to need to import link from next forward slash link and once i do that all these errors should go away so now i have these link components available with an href attribute um, that first goes to uh, the root and then the other one goes to slash films of course we need to um, implement that so let's go here oh and in fact i'm sorry we now need to go to layout uh, and in layout we also need to specify where the navigation should be and so i'm just going to import the nav component that we've just created and edit right before the main here okay so i'm just importing it from the right place okay so far so good and there's one more thing that we need to do and that is go into pages index.js and as opposed to having an empty fragment here I'm just going to import the layout component and just wrap my content around this. So remember, this is what the children would refer to. And theoretically, if I've done everything correctly, um, I did not. So let's go back to the layout component, apparently, because there is something that is missing. Oh, and I'm not returning anything. I think that's what it said, right? So I need to, yeah, that's right. I put the wrong parentheses there. Okay, let's see if we're there now. Excellent. So now what we have is a navigation bar. We do have a link linking out to home to films. Of course, that doesn't work. And then we have the content of our index.js file. So now we have a very basic structure in the next year's built up that we can go and work with so from the next video we will going to add some additional pages and then start to work on how to register users and how to consume data from strapping